Before the war, these solar heaters were made in this big Ukrainian city which is now located 20 kilometers from the front line. Here we see mirrors which direct solar radiation onto this tube. That is why solar radiation can hit water or other liquids circulating through the tube to several hundred degrees. The device should slowly rotate according to the moment of the sun across the sky, but now I show its rotation when the sun disappears and this position radically reduces the accumulation of dust on the mirrors. This is its return to operation for the conversion of solar radiation into thermal energy. In addition, we will also use this invention from Finland. This tank will be filled with sand, which will be heated to approximately 500 degrees Celsius during the summer, and this thermal energy is stored until the winter to be used for space heating. These Finnish guys have invented how to radically reduce these heat leaks with the help of this pipe. But I will change their invention, including in the sense that those solar heaters will hit a similar cone of sand and gravel to almost 300 degrees during the summer, so that this thermal energy will hit a house in the winter. Here we need to install six thermal insulation, which will give approximately this appearance to our heat storage. This 130 cubic meters of soil can heap up here, or we can form such terraces. Or our white ball can be buried more deeply, and this few hundred cubic meters of soil will make the slopes of the hill more horizontal. Let's place our house near the hometown of these guys, near this Finnish city of Tempera. It is funny that it is not far from this place where the most famous Santa Claus lives in the terrible frost and long poly night. Space heating of our house near Tempera would require approximately two such solar heaters, or they can be replaced by any parabolic dishes with a total area of 40 square meters of mirrors, or by such parabolic troughs, but they must be capable of not only such a rotation, but also rotation around the vertical axis. Here, or in this resource, solar radiation will heat up such thermal oil with a temperature of about 300 degrees Celsius. It is known that thermal oils are used as a liquid heat carrier in saw heaters of this type with a heating temperature of almost 400 degrees. This pump will create a circulation of hot oil between our saw heaters and the pipe of this spiral. The saw heaters increase the temperature of the oil to about 300 degrees and the oil gives this thermal energy to the sand and gravel here and returns to the saw heaters. All the spirals hit on this hot core, three spirals here with a total length of their pipes of 240 meters. This core is 108 tons of similar sand and gravel mixture which is usually cheaper than ordinary sand. Summer in Finland has a little more sunny days than cloudy days and the duration of the night is only a few hours. Therefore, our solar heaters will make almost a full rotation during a long summer day in Finland. 40 square meters of mirrors of all our solar heaters will produce this kilowatt hours of thermal energy which will heat those 108 tons of gravel and sand in the core in this way. You can easily calculate that this heating from 80 degrees Celsius in early May up to 275 degrees in September will take only 26% of this heat. Another 27% will be taken by this heating of additional 124 tons of sand, which form these parts of the cone and are heated by these flows of thermal energy from the hot core. The same thermal flows heat this part, which is 130 tons of granules that will be described in 7 minutes and whose average temperature increases in this way from May to September. Heating them will take another 17% of this thermal energy, and the remaining 30% will become these heat leaks from our cone into the environment, and now we will analyze these heat leaks more carefully. Our cone is surrounded by this very thick thermal insulation with a thickness of almost 2 meters, and it will be described in 7 minutes. In addition, this layer of sand with a thickness of about 1 meter provides additional thermal insulation. That is why the temperature here is noticeably lower than this temperature of the core, as a result of which heat leaks in this direction are reduced. 
It is interesting that 52% of the energy of heat leaks go through that thick thermal insulation, and the remaining 48% of the leaks go this way. And let's take a closer look at this way. My calculations were based on the assumption that the gravel in the sand increases the thermal conductivity of the cork to this value, while the thermal conductivity of this sand is almost two and a half times less. Therefore, this layer of sand is thermal insulation on the path of this moment of thermal energy, which must pass through one meter of sand in the center or two meters on the periphery. This next layer is more than one and a half meters thick and consists of thermal insulation granules with approximately this thermal conductivity. This soil is also thermal insulation and the heat must pass several meters here or to groundwater. The next method is consistent with our life experience, because we know that this temperature at the periphery is usually less than this temperature at the center. This phenomenon occurs due to this moment of the thermal energy which aims to leak through this thermal insulation, and it is obvious that decreasing this temperature reduces these heat leaks. But we will increase this temperature difference even more due to the fact that the hot oil from the solar heaters comes into the spirals through the center and comes out from the periphery. Therefore, that temperature difference increases to about 35 degrees, and this fact additionally reduces these heat leaks from the hot core. It was September, but this phenomenon will be greater in other months, and for example, this is the middle of May when the temperature difference is almost 100 degrees. This increase in the temperature difference in May was due to the fact that this pump reduces this oil flow by almost four times, which causes an increase in this temperature difference between the oil inlet and the outlet. Moreover, this phenomenon will increase radically in winter due to the fact that we will take thermal energy for heating the house through the same spiral pipes as follows. When the solar heaters are not operating, the oil comes into the spiral through the periphery and comes out from the center. After this, the hot oil transfers its heat to the water of the home heating system and therefore the oil becomes cooler and then it slowly goes through the spiral again. The cool oil will strongly absorb this heat from the periphery of the hot core, as a result of which the oil will quickly heat up, and therefore it will quickly take this heat in the center of the spiral. That is why this temperature at the periphery of the core will decrease rapidly at a rate of about 2 degrees per day during January and February, and therefore these heat leaks from the core are quickly reduced. Here, inside the sand, we will install a similar spiral of 20 meters of pipes, through which the water of the home heating system will circulate starting from October. The hot sand will constantly heat the water, which has a temperature of about 35 degrees, as a result of which the temperature of the sand in these places decreases radically, and therefore these heat leaks will decrease up to several times. In addition, here in the lower part of the sand layer there is a ring of 30 meters of pipe. The circulation of the home heating system water through the pipe reduces the temperature of the hot sand of these places down to 40 or 60 degrees. Therefore, heat leaks in these directions can be reduced several times. Moreover, the home heating system water will circulate through this horizontal ladder of 80 meters of pipes, which is installed here, 10 or 20 centimeters above this boundary between the sand and the granules. The consequence of the transfer of heat from the hot sand into the water will be a radical decrease in the temperature of the sand in these places, down to 40 degrees, and therefore heat leaks in these directions will be reduced several times. In addition, there is another ladder of pipes here, which will be described in 4 minutes. To summarize, these are the temperatures at different points of the cone at the end of September, when the cone is completely filled with thermal energy for winter heating of the house. These two layers of hot sand store 38% of the thermal energy, and another 23% is stored in these thermal insulation granules. This is the climate in Tampere during the seven months of the heating season. These sunny days in December and January will do little to help our solar heaters, because the length of the day will be only five hours, and the sun will be weak due to its low position above the horizon. 
This temperatures in Tampere form this heating needs of a house with an area of 100 square meters. These heating needs are covered not only by the skewered house of heat from our solar heaters, but also by this thermal energy from the hot sand and gravel of our cone, the heat leaks from which are described here. The sum of these two columns determines how the temperatures of different parts of the cone will decrease. We see that the minimum temperatures of the cone will be at the end of March, when such temperatures will be at different points of the cone. After this, from the beginning of April, the temperatures will begin to increase and will reach this situation again at the end of September. These are my rough estimates of the total cost of construction of the entire solar space heating system in Tampere, but it will be radically cheaper in sunnier and warmer regions. For example, this is a comparison of our case in Tampere and this case of the same house, but if it is built 2000 km to the south in Austria, near Vienna. We see that the number of solar heaters is reduced by half, and the volume of the hot cone is also almost half as much in Vienna compared to Tampere. These are my estimates of the total cost of building the heat storage for the house near Tampere, and these expenses relate to the building the bottom of the cone. Here we have to dig a pit. These are layers of extruded polystyrene with a total thickness of 15 cm, and many people will see an analogy with this well-known type of house foundation. Then we lay this layer of cheap recycled crushed serrated concrete with a thickness of 25 cm. This will be a 30 cm layer of sand and gravel mixture, and its purpose will become clear in 2 minutes. Here we will put another layer of cheap crushed serrated concrete with a thickness of 25 cm, and the total thickness of crushed serrated concrete here will be 55 cm. This layer is expanded clay or cheaper granules of blast furnace slag, and the thickness of the layer is from 115 cm in the center to 70 cm on the periphery. It is obvious that these layers can be one material, for example, expanded clay or slag granules. Our cone is covered by this durable cap, and it might be possible to make it from sheets of polystyrene and foam with a total thickness of 25 cm. There can be several dozen approximately such modules, which are glued together with polyurethane foam and alternately made in one mold from polystyrene foam sheets and polyurethane foam. This space is filled with cheap loose mineral wool or urea from aldehyde foam, and the total thickness of all thermal insulation changes from 2 meters here to 1 meter here. These are the maximum temperatures, which will be at the end of September, and for example, here we see that the temperature of this polystyrene is less than its maximum allowable temperature. It is obvious that here we must install polymer films to protect against moisture and rainwater penetration, and one of our problems will be the removal of water vapor from the hot sand and the thermal insulation. Let me remind you that here we have installed a layer of sand and gravel mixture, and we also installed this horizontal ladder of 50 meters of pipes inside the layer, here. The heating season begins on the 1st of October, when the water of this home heating system begins to circulate through the horizontal ladder. It is obvious that the water is heated in the ladder by the hot sand and transfers this heat to the walls of these red pipes inside the concrete floors of the house. This heat transfer results in a decrease in the temperature of the sand and gravel from 90 degrees to 70 degrees during two weeks, and after that the temperature continues to decrease. Therefore, these heat leaks are reduced up to several times according to the difference between this temperature of the sand and this temperature of the soil. The middle of October is the time to turn on this spiral, which I was talking about 6 minutes ago, and the home heating system water will first go through that lower ladder, and then the water will go through the spiral. This short pipe helps to change the heating power of the house by changing the speed of water flow in this direction. The spiral was not filled with water during the summer, and its filling with water on the 15th of October occurs when the temperature of the sand near the spiral is almost 200 degrees. The water pressure of two bar increases the boiling point of the water to 130 degrees, but it is obvious that vapor bubbles will appear inside the pipe of the spiral. 
Nevertheless, the bubbles disappear here and the generation of the bubbles will stop after about two days, when the temperature of the sand grains which touch the walls of the pipes decreases to 130 degrees. In two weeks we will connect the rim, and in one month after that the upper ladder will be connected. You already understand that the water from the home heating system first goes through the lower ladder, then through the spiral, then the water goes through the ring, and then through the upper ladder, and after that the hot water is returned to heat the house. This short pipe allows us to control the heating power of the house and gradually increase the water flow in this direction. Unfortunately, this water flow reaches its maximum around the beginning of January. After that we will be forced to take the thermal energy from the hot core through the same oil spirals as I described 9 minutes ago. This is a heat exchanger where the hot oil transfers thermal energy to the water of the home heating system. Later we have to turn off this lower ladder when the temperature of this gravel sand mixture layer decreases to 35 degrees and this will happen around the middle of January. Here we may want to add a water heat storage, which will be heated with hot oil from the soil heater during sunny hours to help space heating the house in March and April and for its hot water supply.